All right, so we are talking about finally dropping 30 pounds and getting all day energy and getting off of meds, if that's what is the case for you, without the hassle of diets, because nobody likes diets. So welcome. If you have failed at dieting or nutritional therapy in the past, don't feel bad because it's not just a case of it's your fault. If you've been concerned in the past that you can't succeed even though someone guides you in health matters, silence those fears because it is possible. And if you think that you can't beat the sugar addiction or reverse weight problems and then sustain those results, that also is not true. So if you've ever thought that living a life of continual fear and people pleasing will cause you to fail, that is probably true. You're probably right there. So what I'd like to do is I'm here to show you how to finally gain that sustainable great health without the misery of diets during this webinar. So I'm really glad you joined me. I want to help the people that actually want to beat the sugar addiction and people who want to reverse their weight issues and then help you to sustain it so that it's not just a temporary fix and then you go back to the way it was before without having to count calories or go on some miserable diet that only works temporarily and to keep you from having to return to the doctor with no change in your symptoms and then have to take medications for your issues or worse, maybe surgery or who knows, maybe a long-term chronic illness because that's not what Jesus has for us. So you absolutely can beat the sugar addiction and reverse weight problems and then sustain it through threefold health coaching that works. That's what we're going to be talking about. And you can do this now through something I want to share with you, which is the Revive Your Health in 12 Weeks Makeover. Now, a little bit about me. When I was younger, I had the privilege of growing up with a one-of-a-kind holistic family doctor, Dr. Henry G. Beeler. He was really a genius in understanding why the body gets sick and what organs need to individually and collectively heal. So I saw family members getting well, and I myself was able to recover from a few health challenges that I had along the way, and I just completely was changed as a result of it. And this doctor was in Southern California. He had written a bestseller called Food is Your Best Medicine. He treated a lot of the Hollywood stars, and he himself had colon cancer. I believe it was four stage, and just realized, you know what, if I go along and I deal with this conventionally and I just do medicine and surgery, this isn't really attacking the root of the issue. This isn't why I have this. So I need to figure out what is going on here. And he studied extensively. He studied why toxins cause disease. He studied, uh, you know, across not only in the United States, but also across in Europe. He had uh, friends that were in the insurance industry that would go across and they would do their own studies and then they would compare notes. And then he saw patients, many thousands, tens of thousands of patients, uh, cancer patients, diabetes, people with all kinds of issues. And he was able to help them and treat them and see them recover their health very simply and actually very cheaply too, which is good news for us. So uh, a little bit more, I'm a certified holistic biblical health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And I have over five years of direct clinical experience. And I like to say, you know, maybe more than 30 years of personal experience because I grew up this way. I have also additional training through the Weston A. Price Foundation. And I continue to just grow in my understanding and training because you can never know too much. You know, as you seek, you will find. So I always am asking God, Lord, what do you want to show me here for other people? Because we are in a place where we are in dire need of good health. So, and I think people here tonight need to hear that. Uh, I have successfully coached a very close family member through four-stage colon cancer and another through chronic fatigue. I walked myself through complete gut recovery after sustaining stress-related gastritis and peptic ulcer. That was not fun. Any of you who've had that know what I'm talking about. And so even though I grew up with these things, knowing these things, there were periods of my life that I did not hold to them and honor them and understand them for what they were. And so I too experienced the effects of ill health. Now, uh, just some fun stuff. I love street ministry because I love people. I like playing piano, uh, foraging for wild medicinals, just going out into the yard and seeing what different plants are and using them, teaching my girls how to cook holistically. They're still a little bit young there, but as they get older, I love to have them, you know, help me with that. And I really like the atmosphere of just crunchy coffee shop and health food stores, just uh, going and being a part of that, meeting people and also random road trips. So again, my story, that is me there. That is me eating a big bowl of green soup that Dr. Beeler shared with us. 
and uh, it was very healing and I ate a bunch of it. So it is one thing that uh, I remember. I was a string bean kid who had her school lunches routinely scrutinized by the lunch ladies. So they would come along and they would dump out the contents of my lunch and they would see if I actually had enough. And they, they were actually wondering, you know, if they needed to contact uh, social services because they were wondering if my mom was starving us. And I remember at that age saying, no, I'm well fed. I have enough to eat. I'm not hungry. I feel good. You know, there was just something in me that kind of rose up against that establishment of regular food. So I was dealing with others talking, talking skeptically about the different way I nourished myself. And I kind of grew up in that, in that place of being different. And it seemed like no one would hear what I had to say about body healing nutrition and a better way to live. Some were family members, some were medical personnel, some were peers. You know, some people listened and then some people thought, well, I don't know about all this. So I really hit a wall where I realized that I was being called to help others regain their health so that they wouldn't have to go through conventional medicine or new age programs. You know, that was really a passion of mine because Jesus is so real and he has so much that he has for us to do. Doesn't he, women? I mean, he just, he has so much for us in the kingdom. And it's so important that we are ready and able to do what we need to do in this hour. I want to share with you from the word for just a little bit. There's a, a word as I was praying for tonight that God um, just really gave me through a dear friend. And I think it's going to speak to some of you right where you're at because it's really spoken to me. And this is from Psalm 66. And I'm going to just skip down to verse 8. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip? For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and we went through water. Yet you have brought us out into a place of abundance. I tell you what, that speaks to me tonight because that's been where I personally have been and so many others of you I know have been. Last year was a crunching year, wasn't it? It was just like a year I've never experienced before. And I hope not to again. But you know what? If we go from glory to glory, it'll be all right. But um, it's, it's one of those things where we have experienced a crushing in a Gethsemane time. And God wants to bring us into a place where that is fruitful, where we are being freed from this chaff that we have and being healthy to go forward. So again, more of my story. Then I discovered healing for myself. So again, I, I mentioned to you that I had a period of time where my own health wasn't that awesome. <laughs> Uh, mostly high school, right? A lot of strain and, and stress personally. Um, you know, I was experimenting with eating junk foods and things like that, friends' houses and whatnot. So I actually had a place where I was getting over a benign cyst. I didn't know it was benign at the time, but getting it checked out, oh boy, that was uncomfortable. I did not like medical offices at all. So having to go in there and get that thing done, I was like, whatever I got to do, I'm going to get over this. And I had energy, I had sleep issues, and then later on, healing a damaged gut. So afterwards, after I went through all this, I began to coach others. I mean, God literally shook me out of bed one day several years ago and began to tell me, I want my people to come back from Babylon, back from eating like that, and go into a, a return to like how it was in Eden, like how it was when I walked and talked with my people and they were eating the foods that I created. And so he would just give me stuff and I would scribble it down at nighttime. And boy, the sleep was like, you know, that candle was being burned at both ends and I was just writing and creating and learning and being trained. And finally, I, I've spent the last several years crafting an online training center and, and coaching programs and all that. I mean, there's just so much, but it's all because of what he wants to do for you. And it's what he wants to do in his kingdom. So it's worth it. So again, just the challenges of family life for me personally, while building this business and building this ministry made it feel near impossible to get off the ground. I mean, so much struggle, but I love what I do. I can tell you that working with people who long for their health to change in a personalized coaching environment or in a group setting and I absolutely love Jesus. I want, I want him to get the most praise that, that is due to his name. So, and we can do that by raising up an army of strong, beautiful, spirit-filled women that are healthy, that are not sick, that are not depending on medicines or anything else, but know how to thrive in their environment. And that is you. 
So not only do my family and I walk in vibrant health, uh, but we are seeing individuals get free from disease and sustain these results. And I want to say glory to God, all glory to him. So how does this apply to you? Well, you may have had the thought that the natural route is truly God's way, although we can all probably say, okay, yes, the medical sphere sometimes has its place. You may have experienced health problems or been to the doctor and then came away with a less than glowing report. Maybe that even brought up some anxiety. And it's occurred to you that being well is the key to being able to walk in your heart's desires and God's ministry plans for you. It absolutely is. You may want help knowing how to do this, but you don't know where to turn. Well, I want to share a quick testimonial with you. Not only has this worked for me, but here's a story about M, who was in the coaching program recently. And I want to show you the transformation that happened with her in just six months' time. So we're not talking about a quick fi fix rushing into this. We're talking about things that you can do, little bite-sized steps that will draw you into permanent healing. So she was overweight. She had 35 extra pounds. She was a big social drinker not an alcoholic, but she just loved that time with her friends. But she was lethargic and she relied on coffee like so many do. So she could not fit into, ladies, her favorite red pants. And she had issues with how she saw her body. Her identity was wrapped up in performance. What can I do? You know, how well am I doing it? And then she would go and work out furiously. And she didn't really understand her place as a daughter of the king. So six months later, as we took her through the coaching process and she began to make these changes and actually understand it, not just do what we parroted to her, but she actually understood it. She was no longer a victim of this yo-yoing. She would do like vegan diets for several weeks and then she would be full dairy and then she would, you know, have meat and then she would do some other things. And it was discouraging for her because she would feel great and then she wouldn't. And then the wouldn't made her feel like it was all worthless. And so she would binge. You know how it is. So she now has balance and she is content when she eats out. She knows what to choose. And she actually switched from her regular drinking of lots of alcoholic drinks um, to other drinks that heal. And that works for her. So she no longer needs coffee to wake up in the morning either. And that was really a shock to her. She hadn't felt like that. And she can actually wear those red pants too. So she is off on an overseas trip. And it was just such a joy to see her go and just see her know, I can go and I can have fun in this new place. I can, I can experience what God has for me here. And I'm not afraid of the food. I'm not afraid of you know, having some treats. I'm not afraid of whatever. I know how to do this. And I know how to do it without going overboard. And I know how to do it without just restricting myself. <clears throat> so here she is today. You can see that she sent me a text recently and she says, it's a red pants day. And there she is in her favorite red pants that she wasn't able to wear for such a long time. <clears throat> so what we're going to cover here is three secrets that I want to teach you. The first one is how to beat the food addictions that you're fighting. Because so many of us do. We do well, but there's that thing in the mind where we're like, I want ice cream now, you know, I want that hot fudge. Oh, if I could just get into those bags of kettle chips, you know, salt and vinegar, that'd be so good, right? So we're going to learn how to kill the sugar and food opiate addictions and how to properly feed your cravings. Secret number two is how to really keep off that weight without the diets, without the failure cycles, without it coming back on later. When it's gone, we want that off. We want it to stay off. And then the third secret is how to end the tendencies toward people-pleasing, fear, and the lack of boundaries. And those things all feed into the, the cycle of feeding yourself too, because they cause us to self-medicate. They cause us to emotionally eat. We can end that. So let's look at the first one. Kill the addictions that you're fighting with insight and his power instead of willpower. So what we want to do is we want to understand the sugar and the food opiate addictions and properly feed those cravings. Now, here's the first one. Some people think, I don't understand how health coaching will work to keep me from wanting to eat sugar and my other junk food go-tos. Did you catch that? That key word there is wanting. So that's the part that we are actually going to be able to attack and be able to change so that you actually want something different. We need to make new associations with food. Now I wanna tell you a story of a, an amazing lady here, her name is Suzanne. And in the beginning, when I first met her, she was very open, she, I love that about her, and she just said, you know, my go-tos are Coke, 
Coca-Cola, coffee, chips, and salsa. And her new go-tos actually after we began working together were things that were good for her and that she was actually able to enjoy as treats. So that was such an amazing transformation on her part. She actually didn't know how to cook in the beginning, but she started out slowly. Okay, so if you're thinking, oh, this maybe is for people that have it all together that already know what they're doing. Okay, she didn't, even, she didn't really cook. So she learned to enjoy the new and healthy foods that would help her body one by one. And she replaced the junk food with the new go-tos. She allowed God to heal the deep woundedness in her soul and the weight dropped off. She is still at 35 pounds lost several years later. It's such a transformation, just amazing. So if you look here, here she is before. And then after you can see the change. You can see the absolute just shift, you know, that deep seatedness, that settledness that's in her and that healthiness. Now, secret number one, I want to talk about the background. Sugar addiction has a biology. So it's not just a lack of willpower. You don't have plain and simple willpower issues. You need to know how to break the addiction successfully within a set time frame with support, knowing the nutrients that will help to kill that desire for sugar. So no, it's not just a lack of willpower. There is a set time frame that is known, that is backed by research, that if you can get beyond that and you can give yourself the right nutrition, the certain fats, minerals, vitamins, and macro, the uh, macro ingredients, then you can actually beat that. And not only that, there are certain tools and, and there's one supplement in, in specific that will help to feed that and change your taste buds, thereby snuffing out that sugar addiction even faster. So sugar addiction actually equals critical nutrient needs. We're going to talk about that. Your body has, it's like a, uh, a recipe that it needs to be able to function correctly. So it needs a certain number of these vitamins, minerals, you know, substances. And when it has those, it's happy and it doesn't crave things like sugar, like the sugar you see on the shelves. I can tell you that's true because it's true for me. And it's true for the clients that I've had. We can go into a Krispy Kreme. We can go into a, you know, a, a Popeye's or a, I mean, any of these fast food places and not feel like we are missing out if we don't immediately order a full meal in there or even anything. I can go through, I can walk out of there and not have felt a thing. It's amazing. At one time in my life, I did. Sugar addiction equals the proper replacements too. So for many of you that have been on diets, you know about how to crowd things out. You know which things, I'm not supposed to eat that, not getting get into that, that's not good for me. All right, I'm just gonna be really, really good. Oh, I'm gonna stack those broccoli trees, I'm gonna eat those up, I'm gonna have my nice piece of chicken there and I'm good, right? Maybe a baked potato here and there. But then you end up finding out, oh man, I'm so hungry, I just want X, Y, Z. And then you just can't hardly stand it anymore. And you're thinking about it, right? Even if you're not actually doing, you're thinking about it. And that's frustrating too. So it's because your body is wanting certain replacements that it's not getting. It's sort of like a code. You can crack the code. And I'm going to share the code with you. So you can beat this for good. All right. This is sickening here. Sugar, 80% or more. Uh, of more, sorry, 80% of more than 600,000 food items in the grocery store and online have added sugar and not just the regular white sugar. And, and you would think that it's just like white sugar has gone away, right? Because all these new names are out now, cane sugar, invert sugar, all of this. No, it's basically the same thing. There's very little instances where the sugar that they use is actually going to be a type that's not going to mess with your blood sugar and, and rob you of critical nutrients. So let's go back in time. So in 1800, quite a while ago, the average person ate 10 pounds of sugar per year. Still sounds kind of hefty in my opinion, but nowadays the number is 152 pounds of sugar and 146 pounds of flour for each person just per year. That breaks down to about one pound of sugar per day. Imagine that. Imagine a pound of sugar per day. That is, oh my goodness. So there was a jaw-dropping study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition proving that foods high in sugar, which means they have a high glycemic index, you've heard that, 
are as or more addictive than cocaine and heroin. Now, I know some of you have probably heard that, but for those of you who haven't, it's about eight times more addictive. So they, they had rats that would be given sugar water or cocaine, and every time the rats would go to the sugar water, every time. So in fact, Dr. David Ludwig and colleagues from Harvard discovered that high sugar, high glycemic foods actually stimulate the brain in a very critical way. In fact, they trigger what's called the nucleus accumbens, and this is the brain's feel-good center. This is, you know, what you feel like when you have a big bag of popcorn or when you, you know, go to the fair and you have what's um, known to us in the South as maybe the funnel cakes. You guys know those, those funnel cakes. And uh, when you stimulate the center through the high sugar foods, your body urges you to keep getting more of that. Why? Because it's not getting some of the other nutrition that it needs to actually shut off that craving, right? So Dr. Ludwig's study proved two things that are really critical for us to get. The first one is foods with a high sugar content are addictive biologically. They are addictive. They are actually designed, they are actually designed to get you to need them, to want them, to crave them, to go back to them day after day. It is diabolical. Okay, not all calories are created equal. This is no matter if it's the carbs, fat, protein, you know, taste, it's, they're not all the same. Okay, so if you have a cup of cashews, let's say, and you have a cup of uh, chocolate chips, we know that those are not the same kind of calories, right? Because it has to do with what those calories are made of and what kind of package they come in and what it does to your body, specifically your liver and your other organs as they have to process that stuff. So if you're eating foods with sugar, you are activating your brain's pleasure center and becoming more addicted with each bite. And what about the appetite shutoff? Does that happen? No, not with sugar. Sugar actually never triggers leptin. It does not trigger that, which tells your body, I am satiated, I've had enough. Thus the addiction, okay? So you can see the point that I'm making about willpower. It's not just a case of willpower. It's a case your body's been hijacked and now you're addicted. So what we have to realize is that sugar actually goes in. It's like a leech. It's going to take your body's nutrients. It's going to take like the calcium, the iron, the magnesium, the zinc, and all of that because it is so toxic that your body says, oh my goodness, I have got to kind of take away the intensity, the nutritional deficiency of this thing. And I've got to try to make it so that when it goes through this body, it's not just going to wreak havoc. So it tries to neutralize it. So where do you think those things come from? The calcium, the iron, zinc, all that? It comes from your bones, your teeth, and other areas of your body that need it. Okay, now the second thing, food opiates. Have you heard of those? Some of you are going, what in the world food opiates? So I like to say these are not strong enough to get you arrested, but they're strong enough to keep you coming back for more. What in the world is a food opiate? This is why we love cheese. How many of you love cheese? So processed dairy products have something called casein and casein fragments called caseomorphins. Don't worry, you're not going to have to remember this. There's no test on it. But these fragments actually light up the brain receptors that are the same ones triggered by, yes, you guessed it, hard drugs and sugar, right? So what cheese and processed dairy does to us is it causes the brain to release that dopamine again when we eat these salty, pleasurable foods. And especially these, because cheese, it's got that addictive substance, is it? Why? Because the mother actually feeds the baby milk, right? Where does cheese come from? Milk. And in order to do that, God has built in this special process where that baby needs to have some extra in, um, you know, inclination to go to the mother and feed so it will grow. Well, there's sort of an addictive little substance there. And it's good when it's natural. It's good when it's in the milk. It's not good when it comes to us in the form of processed foods and cheeses. So there again, it's not just, oh man, I really love cheese. Why do I love cheese? It's just the fat. No, it's not. It's because it's got an opiate in it, an opiate-like substance. 
Now get this, Dairy Management Inc. worked with dairy companies and fast food to greatly increase cheese stuffed items on the menus. And what do these do to us? Well, yes, they addict us, but then we see heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer, and you name it. And we just continue to get sicker, you know, more overweight, and we just keep going back to the same place that's feeding us these poisons. Now look at this research, just quickly. The US National Library of Medicine. So researchers actually identified addictive foods and they tested a group of people, 500 people. They used the Yale Food Addiction Scale. And do you know what food came out as the most addictive anywhere in the country? You know what it was? It was pizza. Now that's not a big surprise, is it? You've got the bread, which breaks down into the sugar, right? And then you have the cheese. Okay, it's just, it's the most addictive they found. So foods were also found to be addictive because of the way they're processed. And again, what's most of the junk and convenience food? It's processed food. So they're addictive in and of themselves. It's not just that we happen to like them, it's that they're working against us intentionally. So the more fatty and processed the food, the more it was associated with addictive eating. And those foods with casomorphins, like the cheese, those also, they play with the dopamine receptors. So if you have any conglomeration, if you put all those together and you have your cheese and your sugar and all that, and the, the trans fats and the processed foods, that is a recipe for long-term addiction, okay? 2013 study in New London, Connecticut, they also uh, did this thing where they gave the rats a choice between Oreos or rice cakes. And guess what the rats spent their time eating? They went for the Oreos. Okay, and Oreos, some of those things, those processed foods, they also have an additional addictive factor of chemicals that are lab created that are meant to actually addict a person. It's just, it's food on a whole different scale in this century, really. I mean, we are really fighting against something that, we, that generations of people never had to. So take heart because Jesus has overcome the grocery store. Amen? All right. Examples. I want to give you guys some results and case studies. My own testimony. So when I was in high school, uh, I was pretty healthy. I was very healthy as a kid because, of course, we ate what mom gave us. But then in high school, I began to kind of drift off and spend more time with friends. And, you know, I was able to eat out. I could drive, right? I could go and I could go through Dairy Queen or whatever. And then I decided, you know what? I'm going to go through a year-long experiment where I don't eat sugar or salt. Yes, I was that crazy kid. I did that. Yes, I did. So I went through that whole year and I just refused to eat those things. Um, and I saw major improvements. Like there were just maybe a handful of times. I think I counted five times where I just couldn't get out of it, right? Like it was somebody who, uh, you know, a good friend who really had taken some time to buy me uh, like a little thing of chocolate and they were standing right there. And what could I do? You know, I'd be rude if I didn't take a bite right then. But um, the rest of the time I really avoided it and my skin cleared up, uh, depression really cleared I had better sleep. I also ended up getting onto a vitamin that really helped me at the time that gave me a nutrient I was lacking in. And so um, my eyesight cleared up. Extra sugar is actually stored, can be stored in the retinas, in the, in the front of the eye, rather. And so my eyesight was getting better. And so that was great. Also, Aline, she was a client of mine. She beat the sugar addiction in four and a half weeks. By the way, that's about the time span, okay? So we're looking at four and a half weeks to six weeks. You can get over that. You can do anything, okay? And that's what we want to do. We want to help people get over that addictive period and give them all the resources that they need, give them everything they need to fight that thing and not just fight it, but really just snuff it out. So she went from sodas, sweets, and desserts to the menu plan that we have and the better add-ins, and she is happily sugar-free. And then there's D. She also was really big into sugar, okay? And she had a, a diagnosis of a certain kind of cancer, and sugar will really feed cancer, okay? It's not indicated, uh, at least in what I've studied, as the major cause of cancer, but it feeds cancer growth. So she knew she had to change something because she was going to go back in and have her cancer markers checked again. And by the way, when she finally did, praise God, she was negative for an occurrence of cancer in her. 
So she opted in to occasional indulgences in sugar-free chocolate. We're not talking about Splenda. We're not talking about those chemical versions. There are actually ways to have chocolate, and I would say like raw chocolate, but sweetened with things like stevia that are not going to mess with your glycemic index. And she traded out the junk for the good stuff. So she's doing well there. Here's another testimonial. This couple, uh, you can see the before and after. They just, they ate whatever from the store. They really liked food. They loved spending time together. They travel a lot. And it was beginning to show. And it was beginning to, they were packing on the weight. They were feeling more tired and run down. And that's when they came to me. And so I was able to work with them. And they said, if it hadn't been for you, all praise to God. I don't know if Amanda and I would be where we are now eating-wise. All of the modif modifications through your program and in general are paying off significantly. So you can see them there. They've really dropped a lot of the weight, dropped the belly. They're feeling so much better. They were able to, um, in many cases, reduce, I think, a lot of the medications that they were on and they're working towards getting off. But that's where they were at. And they just, they're so thankful. And I'm excited for them. This is Michelle. So you can see the before and the after. She struggled with a lot of health issues, just really some eating issues. I don't know if any of you have had irritable bowel syndrome or had cysts or um, you know uterine cysts or any kind of thing like that, but she had a lot of stuff going on. And so she was able to really clear that up. And here she is now feeling good. She has gotten into, uh, she sells Mary Kay now, and she's doing so well for herself, and I'm just so proud of her. She got over a lot of food sensitivities that she has, and I think she's still working on a couple of those because it can take time to really rebuild, but she's done fabulously. She's dropped a lot of weight, and she feels better than she ever has before. So again, another one. A uh, person says, hey, just wanted to share. I've never felt so deeply gut level good before. Thank you. I should qualify that I am full and satisfied and full of energy. I didn't know I could feel this good. This is someone that also did the yo-yo back and forth, eating different things, feeling terrible. She came to me absolutely desperate saying, I can't go one meal without eating and feeling really bad afterwards. So this actually was a turnaround for her within a couple of weeks. It was very short. Then uh, another couple said that they would tried something new. They did some online grocery shopping and had it delivered, or they just went and picked it up. That's a great way. And they can tell a huge difference, especially in sleeping and how they feel after they eat. Uh, and she says, hubby is getting there. He's lost another five pounds to bring it up to 20. If he were more consistent with bedtime, then he'll feel better. I told him he just has to make up his mind and do it. Thanks so much for your prayers, et cetera. So they are up quite a bit. I believe they're up to 30 pounds and she's close to maybe 25 or so. And uh, they're maybe not even two months in. So God is good. They have really grabbed a hold of this thing. So you might also be thinking, I don't understand how this health coaching will help me when I'm not at home in my own kitchen in the comfort of my own food. And I want to point us back to 1 Corinthians 10, 13 that says, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. And don't we know that the Lord covers every category, including food? The truth is, you don't have to stay hidden like a hermit to be well. You need to be informed and prepared. And what we do is we do a grab and go bag. I teach you how to make one of those. So we fight that void with preparation. With a few key things, you can go anywhere and you can feel prepared and know that you can face any meal or fellowship gathering or whatever it is with confidence. You also need to know what to gracefully say to others when you're out and about, right? That's the other part of it is what am I going to say to people? They're offering me all this stuff. I don't want to be rude. You know, I want to be graceful with it. So there are things that you can do, and we train you how to do that. Thank you for thinking of me at this time, choosing this, you know, maybe this lettuce wrap or this whatever it is, is more helpful for what I need. But that looks delicious. You know, there are ways that you can speak to others and then, you know, acknowledge what they're doing, but also let yourself out. Never avoid social gatherings due to food temptations ever again. So secret number two, how to keep off the weight without diets and the hassle and all those failure cycles. 
many people think I'm not disciplined enough to keep from overeating and I don't have time to count calories. Now, what does God's word say about this? Psalm 46.10, cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. And I think Jesus would say, and I will be exalted in your body. Cease striving. You don't have to strive, child. You don't have to strive, my daughter, my bride. You don't have to do that. I've already made the way for you. I've conquered it. I've set for you to walk in works set for you before the foundation of the world. It's not about striving. So when we think discipline is only is all the picture, we're wrong because it's only part of it. So here is the recipe for success with your weight. You need insight. That's what I'm going to give you. You need a plan. I can give you that too. You need replacements that work. You need things that are going to crowd out the things that are not working for you. And you need the accountability that can build your lifelong healthy lifestyle. Now, you don't necessarily need that accountability forever. You just need it in, at a certain time period, especially where you're breaking those addictions. Now, why does willpower alone fail? Well, look at this study. This is interesting. They took 159 college students and they tempted them all day long, which I'm sure is not hard to do in this day and age. I mean, I feel like these students are just flooded all over the place, aren't they? With images, with food, with, you know, theories and philosophies. Oh my goodness. So five times a day, they were asked questions about the temptations that they faced and how conflicted they felt. And this is what the study revealed. The students with the most willpower the most self-control, made less progress with their goals than those with the least amount of temptations. That's really interesting. The most willpower made the least progress. Okay? So it was more about they had a lot of temptations there. Those who had the most temptations reported feeling mentally depleted and drained at night. So when bombarded with all of those things, they were really getting drained. It wasn't that their willpower was necessarily helping to f them to float through that. So conclusions, number one, trying to resist temptations via willpower is draining. It's draining to try to drum up that strength. And number two, being drained correlates with less progress. So just trying to battle it out by yourself means that you end up being drained and you make less progress. The key is not to engage temptation with force of will, but to avoid temptations or to minimize exposure. So what I'm telling you is you can either hide or you can kill the temptation. You can just snuff it out. Let's do that. Why does calorie counting not work so well? Well, because it's not that a cup of, of you know, ice cream is the same as a cup of green beans or a cup of cashews or something like that. There are other factors at place, as you now know, that are addicting you behind the scenes. So if you have a certain uh, amount of calories that are devoid of what you need, but they stimulate that center, you're going to feel good for a little bit of time, but then you're going to probably overboard it. You're going to want, your body is wanting some of those nutrients. It knows it can't get it the way that it's been going, so it's just going to want stimulation. All right, let me share another quick story with you. This is Sean and Arlene. Here they are after 80 pounds lost, and they are still doing amazing things right now. Uh, they are weaning. He is weaning off of some very heavy medications, and this is very exciting for him because he's been on those meds for 25 years. He is a walking miracle. God has kept him alive for a purpose. You talk about amazing. So they were sugar addicted. They counted calories. Okay, so Sean had this app on his phone that was $20 a month. Can you believe that? He was paying 20 bucks just to count up his calories for everything he ate. Can you imagine what a chore that is? Some of you know. He had, uh, she had skin issues. You can see in that picture, her skin is real clear, but before it was very, uh, you know, pimply and red and um, just producing a lot of oil. So she was, she hated that about her skin. She had it for a long time. Uh, they struggled with GERD and acid reflux issues. Very painful. Took a lot of meds for that. So he snored. They couldn't sleep very well. They had energy problems, the whole thing. So we worked with them. They cleansed. They replaced the addictive substances. 
they beat the addictive time period and they got what they needed. They kept at it and they chose out of the new menus that we have and they lost that weight and they're still doing great. I mean, just amazing. I saw them at a, a conference. God caused our past to intersect and I was like, there they are. And I tell you what, I hardly recognize them. I was so overjoyed to see them. So some of you might also think, I'm nervous about the possibility of eating lots of vegetables to stay thin. Will I really like that? That's a legitimate question. Okay, I just want to kind of pan over to Daniel now. If we know Daniel in the Bible, awesome man of God. So uh, Daniel said to the overseer, okay, with all the guys that were with him, please test your servants for 10 days and let us have these vegetables and water to drink. And then let our appearance be observed in your presence, uh, you know, according to the youths that are eating the king's choice food and tell us what you see. So he listened to them in this matter and tested them for 10 days and get this at the end of the 10 days, their appearance seemed better and they were fatter. That's an interesting word for vegetable, fatter than all the youths who had been eating the king's choice food. So guess what? The overseer continued to withhold their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. And what I think it means is vegetable, you know, based. So now this is the beauty of it. As for these four youth, God gave them knowledge and intelligence in every branch of literature and wisdom. Daniel even understood all kinds of visions and dreams. What a place of glory. Isn't that worth it? Is it worth it, this, this lifetime that we have? Are we just going to serve food? Or are we going to actually press in and be able to have this kind of amazing wisdom and understanding from the Lord? Wow, that's awesome. The angels look down on this and say, this is awesome. I wish I was a human, you know? I don't know what they say, but I just think it's an amazing opportunity for us to be able to experience the Lord in this way. Now, Wellness does not consist of only vegetables. So for those of you that are wondering if this is a vegan program or vegetarian, no, not necessarily. I actually think for myself that some animal products that are quality and of the right type actually help me, okay? And many of the clients have found that too. But if someone is vegan, I can take them on like that and we can talk about it and I can help them in the place that they're at. So wellness does not involve accepting constant hunger. It doesn't. You shouldn't be hungry constantly. If you are, something is wrong. So there are amazing ways to prepare vegetables that will have you salivating for more. Really, really. I mean, I love vegetables. So for me, you guys know those stink bugs? Um, they're kind of infiltrating over the, over the nation, these little stink bugs. And they actually get into your, your vegetables and your fruit if you have them sitting out, and they will actually eat those. And I don't like that because for me, that's my donut. That's what I like to eat, you know? And so many people have found this, this newfound discovery that vegetables and fruits are actually really delicious. It just depends on how do we prepare these things. So real people just like you have witnessed a taste bud shift and noticed that they begin to crave to eat vegetables. It's true. And we have a tool that will help you get there even faster. That's natural. So what is the truth? The fear about rigid eating is not an issue because you've been falsely taught that discipline is all it takes to succeed at weight loss. Yeah, not true. So there's a lot of different diets out there. Paleo, there's keto. That one's really popular right now. Macrobiotic, uh, low carb, high carb, raw food. You know, there's so many out there, and I think generally they get some things right, but they miss a critical foundation of why, what food does in the body, and what your organs need, and what causes toxicity, because when you get to that point, that's where you start to slow down and bog down. It's not just about slimming down in your weight. It's not just about, you know, avoid processed foods. I want to be able to show you the, the full foundation of what happens in our bodies, what our bodies crave, how they work. So then that way you'll not be tricked by diets. You'll not be tricked by these fad things that come along. So a sugar and a carb addiction, along with any other kind of addiction, has roots in nutrient problems. Even alcoholics, they have nutrient problems. Part of it is because of what, you know, what they're drinking that's leaching, but part of it is um, what was there to begin with that causes them to want to drink. 
So it's sort of a cycle. So once the nutrient problems are solved, then we work on the replacement. And scientifically, there is an amount of time that it takes to overcome addiction. Again, about that four and a half to six weeks. I see it over and over again, and it's true. Uh, secret number three, okay, how to end the cycles of people-pleasing fear and the lack of healthy boundaries so that you won't self-medicate with emotional eating. That sounds nice, right? Some people say, I don't know how to understand what I'm feeling so that I can change it. I just end up going for the chips or a mocha latte when I'm upset. And we all have done it, right? We've all gone to something when we're feeling badly or we just can't seem to get the encouragement that we need or, you know, for whatever reason, we didn't feel like going and curling up with God and letting him hear our heart. It was just like that food had a pull on us. First Peter 5, 6 through 7 says this, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So that's what the word says. If we'll humble ourselves, we'll go to God, we'll pour out to him. He's going to show us why these things are happening and we can do something about it. So we want to notice our emotional triggers. How does your body respond? Okay, let's slow things down. When something is upsetting to you, notice your body. Are you clenching up? Is your jaw tightening? Are you feeling yourself stiffen? You know, notice your thoughts. What are you beginning to think? You need to just first become aware that you're upset in some way. Don't worry that you're not at a certain place, maturity, you know, spiritual wise. Just notice where you're at. Be free. So the thoughts that you agree with tell you what you ultimately believe, right? It tells you that there's some things underneath that God wants to bring truth to. That's another thing that we do here in this program is that we want to get down to this, the roots of what's happening in your soul, the roots of what's happening in your spirit, so that we can uproot those things that have been causing you to go to food and feel like food is your friend, okay? Food is just a tool. And food can certainly be an enemy. So we want to have a proper relationship with it. We get all out of whack when we lose our helpful, healthy boundaries. Now you guys have heard that, boundaries. And it's time to get those back. So you need to understand those. Let me tell you something about Jesus. He was able to lay his life down because he first understood his worth. He knew who he was. So he was able to then let them come and beat him and scourge him and put, put him on the cross and do it without any malice in his heart. In fact, what did he say? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Don't send them to an eternity without you. Please have mercy on them. Send them a revelation from heaven so that they will change the way that they see you and view you and view themselves. He was not concerned about himself. He understood. So when he had those boundaries already in place, then he was able to shift the game by laying down his life. He was able to turn the other cheek and let it be slapped, right? But if we are unhealthy spiritually and in our soul, then to let ourselves be slapped can look like abuse that's enabling another person to live a life that's godless. And I want to tell you, somebody needs to hear that today because it's true. So again, it's time to get those boundaries back. Boundaries are our protective walls that do most of that willpower work for us. So, and when we have those healthy boundaries in place in our soul and in our spirit, guess what? It's going to line up physically too. Because as we are physically, there is a, an emotional and a spiritual reality to that that are manifesting. Would you guys agree? Just think about it this way. In the beginning in Genesis, what did God do when he created the world? He spoke it. It was unseen first. And then when he spoke it, it came into being. And so there are different realms. There's body, soul, and spirit that are all wrapped up together. And when you uh, sow good seed into those couple of areas, you're going to reap them in all of them. Now, boundaries. Let's talk about those. Think about a river. Think about where you live. Some of you actually have rivers near you. Some of you um, that, that are going to be viewing this are, are in the southwest. You may not know of a river near you. That's okay. So just think about it this way. Um, maybe your toddler, okay, spills some milk, right? And the milk just goes flooding, or maybe your grandkids, and that milk goes. And if it's got channels on the side of it, it's like a little river, okay? And those boundaries help it to stay in that river. If it doesn't have the boundaries, 
it's a flood. It gets everywhere. So God tells us that those boundaries are important to a thriving life. In Genesis, we see that. Genesis 3, God's boundary. He said, don't eat of the fruit of that tree, right? So Satan, there was a lie. Satan came in to challenge that. And then Adam and Eve, they crossed that boundary because they did not believe that God was good and that he was truthful in what he was saying. So now what happens? We have a sin problem and we've inherited disease and all this other junk that's come in. And now we blame and we're ungrateful instead of taking responsibility and putting it at the cross of Jesus and getting free. It's time to go back to that. So Adam and Eve did not realize that they were free agents and that they were able to do certain things. For instance, Eve did not realize in that moment that she could counter Satan's lie with the boundary of what God said, right? When Jesus was tempted in Luke 4 and he goes out into the wilderness, how did he encounter Satan? How did he deal with him? He must have been hungry on a physical level, right? 40 days, no food and no water. That is a medical miracle. So when Satan came at him with lies, Jesus said, it is written. So when we have that power of God to be able to speak to those things that are tempting us, that is no small thing. That is your way to overcome. That is overcoming itself. So Adam, he could have countered Eve's request for him to break God's boundary by setting up his own boundary, and that would have protected them both. But we know how the story went. And I'd like to say that I would have done better, but you know what? After I've gone through my own seasons of pressing and I've seen how I myself have maybe complained or been a little bit more distrustful of God, I have to say I kind of understand how the Israelites could have done what they did in the wilderness. And yet I still want to be a Joshua and a Caleb. Amen. I still want to be one of the ones that went in. So, by the way, after all this, we have left the Eden Garden and we are now in the world's cafe. And it's no wonder that we've been sick. Women of God, I'm here to tell you, we are to come out. We are to come out. And it is not out into a little place of dieting where we wither away and we're unhappy for Jesus. Okay? There is fasting. We do take part in that to receive the life that God has for us. But it's not about that. God meant for us to be satiated. He meant for us to be fulfilled. He meant for us to have pleasure in God-ordained ways. And everything else is a counterfeit. Okay, examples. The American Psychological Association's 2011 Stress in America survey. Let's talk about that. So what the survey does is it asks, among other, other things, about participants' ability to make healthy lifestyle changes. And these participants regularly cite willpower as the number one reason for not following through on such changes. Remember, we talked about willpower. So just to back up a bit, willpower is the ability to resist short-term temptations in order to meet long-term goals. Well, the Bible calls this self-control. Now, willpower here is even more active than a person's mood as to how much they emotionally eat. They found that too. And I'll share with you the cravings. So the top three, so if you feel angry, you tend to, people tend to want crunchy and spicy. Sometimes if you're feeling depressed, you're going to want things like sweets or carbs. And anxiety could trigger you to want something soft and filling or something fatty. You know, there's different different ways that your, your mood can affect it. But that's what these people thought. They thought, willpower, this is it. So they weren't aware that there's a bigger picture here of addiction and boundaries and some other things that are causing them to continue to fail. Some people also think, I don't know how to be okay at a heart level when someone close to me is angry or unhappy with me. Have you ever been there? I have. So notice from Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. If we allow people to dictate our happiness and allow them to cause us to mold our behavior so that they will be happy with us, that is a trap. So here's the truth. That's not a problem because pinpointing your emotions and spiritual position is easier than you think. It really is. You can change this by understanding your triggers. You can notice your body and notice what's happening. First, be aware of it. Then that's when you can see your armor in place. You can see it and you can line it up to the word of God and you can tell yourself the truth. You can act as if 
that truth is a reality in your life ongoing until the heart change actually manifests. And you can begin doing this. And this is a process. It's okay to fail. But just know this. Know that this is the way that it actually leads to the destination. It's not just a hopeful that people are hoping for. People actually live in this place. So here are some uh, resources that I have found to be helpful down here. Telling Yourself the Truth by Marie Chapin. That's a really good one. The Gentle Art of Verbal Self-Defense. That's not necessarily a Christian book, and I hesitate to refer to it, but it has nuggets in it. I want you to find those, you know, take the meat, spit out the bones. And then the Boundaries books by Cloud and Townsend. Those are excellent. Um, again, line it up with scripture. And then there's Biblical Healing and Deliverance by Betsy and Chester Kilstra. Also awesome. That will help you to, to understand what's going on. Now, I've taken all of those things and I have woven them into my program. So even if you don't read those books, it's, it's, a, it's okay. I just wanted to have them there for you. Now, I'd like to ask you a question. Are you guys enjoying this webinar so far? Awesome. So we've covered a couple things here, a few things. Secret number one, how to beat the addictions you're fighting. We talked about sugar and opiates, like cheese, and how to feed your cravings properly and defeating the yo-yo cycle. Then number two, secret number two, is how to keep off the weight without diets and without all those failure cycles that too many of us have been on. Secret number three is how to end those cycles of people-pleasing, fear, and lack of healthy boundaries so that you just feel like emotional eating and everything is blown. So here, here it is. Why is getting healthy important to us? Uh, from the word, let's look and see here just a few scriptures that really speak to me, and I hope they'll speak to you because this is where we're at. So Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So Jesus specifically told us, go and make other people like you that have my spirit in you. Go and do this. Fill the earth with my glory. John 640 says, for this is the will of my Father that everyone who looks on the Son and believes should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Jesus wants a family. He wants a bride, and God wants a family. John 12, 49 through 50 says, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commands bring eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. So Jesus is saying, I've told you to go and do all these things, but I'm doing it because I'm hearing it. And I want you to go and do the same. I want you to listen. This is a listening and speaking relationship with the Father, with Jesus, with Holy Spirit. He will show you what to do, and then you just go walk it out. There's no striving here. There's no striving. And we'll get that the more we go on with him. James 1.22 gives us a very important insight that says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So what that tells me is that it is possible to succeed. It is possible to overcome. And not only is it possible, it has been scripted for us. It has been destined for us to overcome. It has been destined for us to overcome in the areas of food and emotional well-being and spiritual well-being. It is not something that we always have to grapple over and laugh about and feel guilty over in Bible studies. We don't have to keep telling each other, oh, I know, I'm just, I keep gaining the weight. I know, I keep eating. No, I like that. You know, I'm just, it's fine. You know, it's just holiday season. We'll get over it and then we'll diet some more. And we laugh about it. But really, why? God has a place of glory for us. He has a place on the earth where we can manifest him like never before. And people are doing it. And you're going to be one of them. So what is stopping you? Let it stop you no more. Now is your time to shine. And that's why I'm here doing what I'm doing because God said it is time for you to be well. So it is time for Christian women to take back your health. It is your birthright. It is what God, Jesus died to give you. So it's there for the taking. Will you take it? And I want to ask you who wants to take things to that next level. So if you are, say I'm ready or you can put it in the chat box because I want to show you how I believe the Lord has shown me how to do this. And mine is not the only way, but it is a unique way. I have not seen this out there so far. 
I've seen a lot of things, but I really feel that God had me put this together in a holistic way. So this is the Revive Your Health Makeover in 12 Weeks for a Vibrantly Healthy You on all levels. It's about helping you to beat that sugar addiction and then reverse those weight problems and sustain it. And you'll see those re results in one week or less. That's what people starting out, they see it immediately. And people experience that over and over. You don't have to count calories. You don't have to do things that are just temporary. This is going to be long term. So here's what you get with it. This is what we put together. You get the first six weeks are these topics here. We show you how to detox how to go through your home and what to choose for your pantry and, and your cupboards and your fridge, that kind of thing. Uh, if you are addicted to coffee or sugar or crunchies or salt, we show you what to do in place of that, okay, and how to get through that. Then we talk about beating hunger and digestive issues, how to properly combine your meals. And it doesn't have to be super science-y. It's just a quick thing we teach you just even using your own hand how to remember Transform your sleep. Some of you are not sleeping very well. We can bring it into that so you can sleep well every night. And then healing your soul and spirit, healthy boundaries, and biblical inner healing. Some of you have never had freedom from things like fear and people pleasing and anger and frustration. You know, you've been believers and you've been saved, but you've had these ongoing things that cause you to wonder what Jesus meant by the abundant life. And you should be wondering because he does have that for you. Then the next part is we go into your adrenal glands, which are the, the little critters in your body that help you to feel awake and alive and that coffee stimulates. We talk about your thyroid gland, healing your gut. That's a big thing now. We also go into cancer. So what's going on with cancer and how to alleviate and prevent that? We talk about hormone balance, how to restore your natural hormones, and then also how to wean off antacids and acid blockers. A lot of people are on those, and those are definitely things you don't want to be on long term. So I'd like to show you some proof, because I think that's necessary. So by putting into practice these knowledge items, the tips, and the guidance found in this makeover, my clients have been able to do these things here. They've been able to lose weight. They get all day energy. Um, if some of them are underweight and they needed to actually gain weight, they weren't healthy in some other ways and they did that. Sleep well through the night every night. Uh, beat your addictions. Do things like um, reversing inflammation and helping your metabolism, lowering high blood pressure, cholesterol. How about pain? Some of you have joint pain, inflammation. Some of you right now, even watching, I feel like God is saying there's inflammation there and that you've been struggling to know how to keep you know, get rid of that. We can show you how to do that. Healing uterine cysts, acid reflux, gut, IBS, so much more. Cancer, I've worked with cancer patients. They've gone back, their cancer markers showed nothing, no cancer. And again, glory to God. He, he heals in many different ways. So who does this work for, this 12-week makeover? This works for women and men who want to lose the weight for good and be able to use their lives for God's glory. It works for couples who want better health together, and it works for those who really need like done with you or done for you meal plans. They don't want to have to figure out what to do, but I'll show you how to do it on your own if you want to. And then this works for those with a health problem that they wish to reverse. You shouldn't have to live with that your whole life and get on meds. It's expensive for one thing, and it's just going to take from you in another way. So the number one reason why people don't get started you might be thinking you can't because it's just too complicated. Oh my goodness, what is this going to involve? This sounds like university, food university. I think I'm going to get my PhD. No, don't worry about that. The good news is you can do this because the hard work has truly been done for you. I'm not kidding. I have taken these years, built a system on it, and people go through it. And the accountability and the changes really work for them. It really does, even if they don't do it perfectly, which is exactly the point. You don't have to do it perfectly. So here's what you're going to get. So you have the 12-week Revive Your Health Makeover. These are videos. You're going to have your own center. You can go in and just watch the video. And that is, that's a, a full value of 2995 These are teaching you things that will keep you out of the doctor's office, that can keep you feeling well and not deteriorating as you age. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, Noah, you know how old he was when he built the ark? Anyone remember? 
he was 600 years old. And Moses, you know, it talks about at the end of his life that his strength and his vision had not, had not uh, been reduced or diminished. Yeah, they knew how to age, and we should too. So you also get these tools. You're going to get my book. It's just kind of an overview for you. I also have a Living Foods cookbook, my favorites that we've tested and created. And then you'll get um, some access to me. And there's an optional mastermind group too. There's a group of people that you can lean on. So with these tools, you're going to be able to identify your particular health issues and challenges. And you're going to be able to understand what those giants are in the way to keeping you from feeling well. You can beat your addictions, rebuild your boundaries, and hear God's voice more clearly and start living the way that you have wanted to for years. So with these tools, you can get rid of things like binging and emotional eating. You can get rid of health wrecking addictions. You can get rid of the frustration and the excess weight, all of it, these health problems, fatigue, the lack of a wonderful life. You don't have to live in misery anymore. So problem solve for a long time, I did not know myself how to be fully happy and fully alive. I was depressed and anxious. If you met me in college, I loved God, I loved Jesus, but I also had these issues because I wasn't fully free. And I'd had a relationship with Jesus. I even went along and I had a, a job and a, a ministry in a pregnancy center for years, but I faced some, um, you know, what some people would call like inner demons. And I had some demonic, I had some oppression in my life too. And nobody had ever taught me how to be free until I started seeking the Lord and he started opening the doors and giving me revelation and, and bringing me into the lives of people who could give me this understanding. So I had to find the way to break through for myself. And that's what I did. I suffered through troubled relationships and family tension. I have been through that. I know what that is. I know what it is that some of you have been through. I've also struggled to heal from stress. So maybe I knew how to eat right. But then anxiety and anger wrecked my life, right? So I've been through mono and pancreatitis, and I even had my, one of my lungs collapse partially, spontaneously. What a weird thing that was. I was in the parking lot at Kmart, and I was, how, I was 25 years old, and I thought, I'm dying of a heart attack at 25 in the Kmart parking lot. It was crazy. I told my sister who's with me, she's a nurse, and I said, can you please help me? Can you help like drive me to the emergency room? Cause I am not dying at Kmart. I actually said that, but I was fine. I lived and, but I've been through these things. So I've been through all kinds of stuff from stress and God had to get me through that fear and overcome it. And I can show you how to do it. I was really struggling. So I went through that nutritional, emotional and spiritual transformation. And I emerged happier than I have ever been. My life is not problem free. Because this earth, you will have trouble. But I was able to overcome, and I tell you, I am not tormented like that. So the time and money saved, this is the benefit to you. You don't have to continually do searches on the internet. You don't have to go and read a lot of books. You can if you want. You can eliminate the expensive doctor's visits, and you can stop being concerned about how to end these addictions. You don't have to feel guilty over failed willpower anymore. And you might be thinking, well, I can't do this. It's not the right time. I just have a lot going on right now. But the truth is, when is it going to be the right time? Because the right time, it might be too late. Okay, I have someone in my family who is very active. He's 63. He um, is super active, more than a lot of 20 and 30-year-olds I know. He goes out and he plays ball with his kids. And, you know, he's, he does hiking and running and everything. And he went through a very stressful period and, eight sort of regular, you know, mostly kind of 1950s meals, you know, kind of square meals, but he thought he was pretty healthy. Well, he was having some chest pains, went to the emergency room, they were almost going to release him. And then they did one more test and come to find out he had 90% blockage in one artery. He didn't know he could have died. Okay, so the right time is now. And in the real world, you follow a handful of strategies that will give you a return. And then you just go back and you look for a couple, two or three more. So you're not trying to get it perfect. You're just trying to succeed at a few and build on that success, right? Because we, we cannot, we as humans, we've got to leave allowance for us to figure it out and hear from God and not do things perfectly all the time. 
and we're going to learn a new way that feeds us. So here so far is what you're going to get. You're going to get this, this health makeover, these videos that teach you. You're going to get the book and the cookbook and the access and um, the monthly coaching too. It's going to be a monthly live call where we can keep on track together. You are also going to get the menus. So these are menus that I have compiled and they're a variety so you can choose. They're the regular menus that have plant-based and some animal. Those are the most popular. You can do vegan if that's where you're coming from. I'll work with you on that. And then I've specifically crafted some that are cancer fighting that come straight from research done by the Integrative Cancer Center, the Block Center in Chicago. And that's where uh, I, I got the information that I used for the cancer patient that was fourth stage cancer. So I wrote those specifically for that. Now, all these menus are specifically designed to help your body be disease free. And they do come with the recipes in the shopping list. So for nine months, you have all of that. And you can use any and all of them if you want to try that. Now, I had to go through my own journey of ill health and seeing what worked for me, seeing what worked for others to go through this. It's, the menus have been time tested. People love them. I get feedback. I've changed them over the years as people have given me more feedback. So you won't have to struggle like I did because I'm just going to give you the fruit of this time. And it's going to make it faster and easier for you to gain the best health in life now. How? Because it takes that guesswork out. You can just kind of follow it and tweak it as you need to. And that is wonderful. That is such a benefit. Because then you can kind of see each week you get your eating plan at a glance. And you know what you can do. Now you might be thinking you can't afford it, the makeover plan, because you don't know if you'll really use it. And that's not an issue because this is going to be accessible indefinitely, meaning you'll have the videos, the steps that you need to take, and the menus and everything else ongoing. And it shows you what to do. So it's going to point you in those directions each week what steps to take. And you don't have to implement everything perfectly. There's a support group and I'll be there to help as well. So those menus for nine months, that's a value of $885. And now you see the total value for everything is now well over, it's almost 6,000 just from what we built here. You'll also get uh, guidelines that I've taken years of how to keep people out of the junk food mud. And I had to go through my own seasons of fatigue and stress. And I wanna give you the pointers that help to eventually keep me out of these pitfalls. Plus, there's a bonus section for those of you that are on acid blockers and have been, how to get off it, how to wean off of them, because I was on those once, and I tell you exactly what I did to get off. Now, it's going to make it faster and easier for you to get your ideal weight and energy, because we're going to show you how to keep from getting in some of these sticky areas in advance. Now, you might be thinking you can't because you don't have time, again, to implement a complex program. It doesn't have to be. It's just one video a week, and then you have your success steps, and then you have your resources that you can get into, and you've got your support. So again, we're looking at the value, and you also get, I'm not done yet, there's um, different trainings that you can go into on a, another series of other topics. In case you're interested, you can go into that, and that's going to answer a lot of questions for you on nutritional topics. So... You might be thinking that you can't go for it because you like food too much and maybe you feel like this is going to be restrictive. Well, I want to tell you there is a way to keep yourself from being diseased but also really enjoy what you do and not miss what you had before. So that whole library that I'm giving you, that is about $1,500 right there. So now you can see if all I did was charge you you know, if all I did was help you do a few of these things, you know, would it be worth it to you? Because the value of all of this is close to $8,000. And I want to show you how to beat the sugar and disease cycle sustainably. So would that be worth it to you if we were just to ask that question? And if all we did was help you to get a clear path for your life and show you what God is calling you to do and help you do it, if it just increased your confidence and got you off the yo-yo cycles, would it be worth it? I think it would be. Would it be worth a million dollars, right? Would it be worth that? So is it worth that 7872 Well, I'll tell you, I had a couple choices I could do. I could make it cheap or I could make it valuable. And I chose 
to give you the thing that you need so that you, you could succeed. And if you could just beat that sugar addiction, if you could just sustain your ideal weight, would that be worth it to you? So if you look at it, what I normally charge, $1,500 for the full makeover plan, but I really want to help people, so I want to give a discount today, and I appreciate that you're here. So the special is normally $9.97 for this full thing, but I'm not even going to do that. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to offer a special for 72 hours that's just the $4.97, and there are payment plans that can go with this, so if you need to break it down, it's fine to do that. But I want to give you all of this for that so that you can begin living what God has for you today. Now, there's a guarantee as well, because I want to back this up. So if the 12-week Revive Your Health Makeover does not help you do exactly what I'm telling you, then I'll happily refund your money within 30 days of the class start date. Basically, if whenever you decide to go in and you start, when you purchase that, that 30 days is still good. So really, the real question is, is it worth spending a few minutes of your time to check it out? So even if it only does half of what I'm telling you, is that worth it? I think you're going to find that it is because you'll experience some breakthrough that you may have never had before. And again, if that wasn't enough, I'm going to throw in something called Bliss Bites, which I'm going to show you at the end. I'm actually going to give this to you free today because you're here with me. But this is the top 25 treats, go-tos that I enjoy, my family enjoys, that over time have just been like, this is delicious. You know, like this is sort of the Krispy Kreme of treats for us. And it, they are so satisfying and you can use them for your friends, family. They're that good. And these are uh, original recipes that we've come up with. So I'm going to, you're actually going to get that today. So again, I had to go through 10 years of experimentation, of cravings, of research to get all this stuff. And that's what I'm going to give you. So you might be thinking that you can't do this because maybe you're not interested in sweet treats or maybe, you know, some of these things don't affect you. Well, some do. And then you'll have the answers and the tools that you need. So not only that, not only this, I'm going to give you the one tool that we use that actually helps to change your taste buds. It helps to curb the addiction faster. And it actually scientifically is proven to make you want things that you should, should be, right, eating the things that your body wants. And this is the Tropical Wheatgrass Powder. It's gluten-free. It's organic. It's amazing stuff. You won't need coffee after this. And that value, we're just going to throw that in. That's another 75, but we're not charging that for it. It's part of the deal. So the total value you see here is you're getting over $8,000 worth of resources here. And that's going to be only 497 for the entire thing. The entire thing, this whole makeover, getting your life back on track, and you can break it up into payments if you want to do that. So my vision for you as a Christian woman in God is to take back the health that God has for you, because this is a year, and we don't want to waste any more time on being sick and not feeling good. So I would love for you to sign up if that's you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the link here that you can go right to it. This is a special. It's not on the website. And you can start it any time. So um, like right now, if you say, oh, my goodness, my daughter is getting married this weekend, you know, don't worry about it. You can start it when it's good for you. Okay? And you're going to get all of that with it. So what about habits? Well, we got to break some old habits. Habits can be tough to change in ourselves, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? And we can feel that pull of normal routine, but as your coach, I want to be able to tell you, and as you're a friend of your health, we've got to get away from these old habits. We've got to do something new, and God is doing a new thing. So information alone is not going to get you the results. You can go online, and you can do all the research. You can find blogs and videos, but at the end of the day, you're just going to have this big quilt, and you may not know where to fit the pieces but I want to give you the foundation so that you understand here and you understand in your heart and your spirit what's going on. And that's why you can sustain it. We do this together. And each month I'm going to be able to help you on a topic and on anything else you have questions on. And you can always email and whatnot. So you will feel a confidence through this. People's lives are being changed. And I, again, I don't take the credit. God has shown me everything I know. 
And um, this is my particular passion. I love doing what I do, and I love the people that come to me. Um, and I'm not going to judge you for where you're at because I've been there. I've been so many, t so many places, so I get it. So here it is. You've got a couple of choices. I really think you can do nothing, right? And you can not take the step of faith, or you can say yes, and you can try. And in less than 72 hours from now, make that investment, and then we can get going on this, and I can help you. And God does it too. I mean, he will, he will show me things for you, and it's just, it's a neat experience.